Here are most commonly asked interview questions in a cybersecurity specialist interview, along with detailed and informative answers. 1. What is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption? Answer. Symmetric encryption uses a single key for both encryption and decryption, meaning both parties must share the same key securely. It is faster, but less secure if the key is compromised. Asymmetric encryption uses a pair of keys, a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. It's slower but more secure, as only the private key holder can decrypt the message. 2. How would you respond to a ransomware attack? Answer. The first step is to isolate the infected systems to prevent the ransomware from spreading. Next, identify the strain of ransomware and determine if decryption tools are available. If no solution exists, restore from clean, secure backups if possible. Finally, conduct a post-incident investigation to determine how the malware entered the network and implement security measures to prevent future attacks. 3. Explain the concept of the CIA triad in cybersecurity. Answer. The CIA triad stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality ensures that data is accessible only by authorized users. Integrity guarantees the accuracy and trustworthiness of data, preventing unauthorized modifications. Availability ensures that data and systems are accessible to authorized users when needed. 4. What is a man-in-the-middle MITM attack, and how can it be mitigated? Answer. A man-in-the-middle attack occurs when an attacker intercepts communication between two parties without their knowledge. This allows the attacker to eavesdrop, alter, or steal sensitive data. MITM. Attacks can be mitigated using encryption protocols like SSL or TLS VPNs and ensuring proper certificate validation to detect fake certificates. 5. What is the role of a firewall in network security? Answer. A firewall monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It acts as a barrier between a trusted internal network and untrusted external networks, such as the internet. Firewalls can block unauthorized access, filter malicious traffic, and prevent certain types of cyber attacks like port scanning. 6. How do you secure a network against insider threats? Answer. Mitigating insider threats involves implementing strict access controls, monitoring user activity, conducting regular audits and using behavioral analysis tools to detect unusual activities, educating employees on security policies, and having a well-defined incident response plan are also critical. 7. What are the key differences between IDS and IPS? Answer. An intrusion detection system IDS monitors network traffic for suspicious activity and raises an alert, but does not take any automatic action. An intrusion prevention system IPS, on the other hand, not only detects malicious activity, but also takes immediate action, such as blocking traffic or isolating a compromised device. 8. How does multi-factor authentication MFA enhance security? Answer. MFA enhances security by requiring users to provide two or more verification factors to gain access to a system. These factors typically include something you know like password, something you have like a token or phone, and something you are like biometric. This reduces the risk of unauthorized access, even if one factor, like a password, is compromised. 9. Can you explain SQL injection and how to prevent it? Answer. SQL injection is an attack where an attacker inserts or manipulates SQL queries in an input field, allowing them to execute malicious commands, like accessing or deleting database information. To prevent it, use parameterized queries, input validation, and least privileged database access. 10. What is the difference between vulnerability assessment and penetration testing? Answer. A vulnerability assessment identifies and evaluates potential vulnerabilities in a system, but does not actively exploit them. Penetration testing, on the other hand, 
goes a step further by attempting to exploit identified vulnerabilities to assess the security posture of the system. 11. What is DNS spoofing and how can it be prevented? Answer. DNS spoofing involves an attacker corrupting the DNS server's cache so that queries for legitimate websites are redirected to malicious ones. Prevention methods include using DNS SCC DNS security extensions. Encrypting DNS requests, for example, DNS over HTTPS, and regularly clearing DNS cache. 12. What are the most common types of malware? Answer. Common types of malware include viruses, worms, trojans, ransomware, spyware, adware, and rootkits. Each has different behaviors. For example, ransomware encrypts data and demands payment while spyware collects sensitive information. 13. What is the principle of least privilege, and why is it important? Answer. The principle of least privilege states that users and systems should only have the minimum level of access necessary to perform their functions. This minimizes potential damage in case of a breach, reducing the attack surface and limiting exposure to critical systems. 14. Explain what a zero-day vulnerability is. Answer. A zero-day vulnerability is a flaw in software or hardware that is unknown to the vendor and has not been patched. Attackers exploit these vulnerabilities before a fix becomes available, making them extremely dangerous. Timely patching and intrusion detection systems are critical for minimizing exposure to zero-day threats. 15. How do you differentiate between encryption and hashing? Answer. Encryption is a reversible process used to protect data, where encrypted data can be decrypted back to its original form. Hashing is a one-way function that converts data into a fixed-length string of characters, which cannot be reversed. Hashes are primarily used for data integrity, while encryption protects confidentiality. 16. How does social engineering work? and how can it be prevented? Answer. Social engineering manipulates individuals into divulging confidential information, often through phishing, baiting, or pretexting. Preventing it requires employee training, awareness campaigns, implementing strong authentication methods, and employing email and web filtering tools to detect malicious content. 17. What steps would you take to secure a web application? Answer, to secure a web application, you should use input validation, implement secure session management, apply SSL or TLS for data encryption, enforce proper authentication and authorization mechanisms, and regularly patch and update software. Additionally, performing regular security assessments and code reviews are essential. 18. What are the differences between a black box? white box and gray box penetration test answer black box test assumes the attacker has no prior knowledge of the system a white box test provides the tester with full information including network architecture and source code a gray box test offers partial knowledge simulating an insider or a user with limited access 19 what is the purpose of network segmentation and how does it improve security Answer. Network segmentation divides a network into smaller isolated sections. It improves security by limiting access to sensitive areas, containing the spread of malware or threats, and controlling lateral movement within the network. If one segment is compromised, the damage is restricted. 20. How would you protect a company against phishing attacks? Answer. Protecting against phishing attacks requires multi layered defense including employee education on recognizing phishing emails, implementing strong email filters using MFA, and deploying anti-phishing tools that scan for malicious links and attachments. 21. What is a denial-of-service DOS attack, and how can it be mitigated? Answer. A DOS attack floods a server or network with traffic to overwhelm its resources, making it unavailable to legitimate users. 
Mitigation includes using rate limiting, implementing a content delivery network, CDN, deploying web application firewalls, WAFs, and having a robust incident response plan. 22. How would you secure a mobile device used for work purposes? Answer. Securing a mobile device involves using encryption, enforcing strong passwords, enabling remote wipe capabilities, ensuring the device has up-to-date security patches, and using mobile device management MDM software to control access to corporate resources. 23. What is SSL or TLS, and why is it important? Answer, SSL Secure Sockets Layer and its successor TLS Transport Layer Security are protocols that encrypt data exchange between a browser and a server. They ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity of data by preventing eavesdropping, tampering, and forgery. 24. Can you explain the difference between proactive and reactive cybersecurity strategies? Answer. Proactive strategies involve taking steps to prevent attacks before they occur, such as regular security assessments, patch management, and implementing security best practices. Reactive strategies focus on responding to security incidents after they happen, including incident response, forensics, and recovery. 25. What is an Advanced Persistent Threat APT? Answer. An advanced persistent threat is a prolonged and targeted cyber attack where an attacker infiltrates a network and remains undetected for an extended period, often to steal sensitive data. APTs are sophisticated and typically involve multiple attack vectors. Detecting them requires constant monitoring and advanced threat detection systems. 26. How do you ensure data integrity? Answer. Data integrity is ensured through encryption, hashing, implementing access controls, and using checksums or cryptographic hash functions to verify the integrity of transmitted data. Regular audits and monitoring also play a key role in maintaining integrity. 27. What is two-factor authentication to FA, and how does it work? Answer. Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security by requiring two forms of identification before granting access. Typically, this involves something you know like password and something you have like a smartphone app or hardware token. It significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access, even if passwords are compromised. 28. How would you secure cloud-based applications? Answer. Securing cloud-based applications involves using encryption for data at rest and in transit. Implementing access controls and MFA, regularly updating and patching. Ensuring proper configurations and using continuous monitoring tools to detect anomalies. 29. What is a security incident and how would you handle one? Answer. A security incident is any event that compromises the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of information or systems. Handling it involves following an incident response plan, which includes identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and post-incident review to prevent future occurrences. 30. What is network sniffing, and how can it be prevented? Answer. Network sniffing is the process of capturing and analyzing network traffic to gather sensitive information like credentials. It can be prevented by using encryption, for example, TLS. Secure network protocols, network segmentation, and deploying intrusion detection or prevention systems. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share like and subscribe to my channel it has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews it has a wide range of real world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science sap aws devops and full stack web development and more that will be useful during interviews it has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. 
For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Ask interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.